Welcome to the FTB Command Center. It stands for Federal Time Bureau. We are a secret government agency tasked to find a way to travel back and forward in time. I am Director Washington. Let me say that time travel exists. The theory of relativity shows us that space and time are intrinsically linked. And yet the technology has not allowed us to go back in time. That is until now. We have made a significant breakthrough. We can now view the past through our viewer and see moments in time. With our research we may know who they are, and much more. Of course, we may not know anything about them. Maybe in the future we may be able to dig up the past and reveal everyone. Who were the people who lived before us? What were their dreams? Who did they love? What hardships did they have to endure? Those who lived before us have made us who we are today. Before you join us in connecting to the past, help support our research in our agency by clicking the subscribe and smashing that like button. Do not forget the notification bell, so you can visit us again. Now, let us see our history together. Walk over to the view as it connects to the past. The King of Rock and Roll is here in August 1958. This is the month that Gladys, Elvis' mother, passes away in Memphis, Tennessee. The Rolling Stone Encyclopedia of Rock and Roll describes Presley as an American music giant of the 20th century who single-handedly changed the course of music and culture in the mid-1950s. Forty-six years later, his name and his music still lives on. Two young women won the bathing beauty contest in 1922. Their identities or location are unknown. P.T. Barnum staged the first modern American pageant in 1854. But America was not ready for that yet. Afterwards, he continued the contest but used photos of women. In 1880, the first bathing beauty pageant took place as part of a summer festival to promote business in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Mrs. Mildred McLean Hazen Dewey Pictured here in her living room on 1730K Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C. in 1902, she was the wife of Admiral George Dewey. She was born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and her father, Washington McLean, was the owner of the Cincinnati Inquirer and was a prominent figure in the Democratic Party. Mildred became a fixture of Washington, D.C. society and married Admiral George Dewey in 1899. Mrs. Dewey left this world on February 21, 1931. Mrs. Mick Charles and her grammar school class on the steps of the Tustin Public School in Tustin, California in 1896. Some of the children have been identified, including Andrew Cock, Naka Bracamonte, Harry Peters, Minnie Smith, Eliva Snow, Norman Fries, Tom Cock, Simon Fitzpatrick, Gladys Harrison, or Scoville, Frankie Adams, later Mrs. Hugh Plum, Arlie Let Clarence Stevens, Alvin Clifford, Grace Fuller, Harriet Yount, Ben Fries, Edith Smith, Shella Brown, Irene West, Lily Van Franklin, Harold Case, Walter Wackham, Ethel Fuller, Edgar Vanderlip, Letty Wells, Gladys Van Hyes, and Dan Thomas. These three Crow Indians are watching the signal in the distance on the northern plains in Montana in 1905. There is no general code or standard meanings for the different shapes, numbers, and type of smoke puffs. The reason for this is because enemies are also viewing the smoke signals. There are a couple of messages that are common. Sending only one puff of smoke is usually a call of attention. Sending two puffs of smoke in your smoke signals is usually a sign that everything is okay. In contrast, three puffs of smoke can be a signal that something is wrong. Robert Pershing Wadlow, here with his family, was the tallest person in recorded history. He was born in Alton, Illinois, on February 22, 1918. Due to hypertrophy of his pituitary gland, which resulted in an abnormally high level of human growth hormone, Robert reached 8 feet 11.1 inches and weighed 439 pounds. 
Robert contracted an infection in his leg caused by a badly fitted brace that helped him walk. The brace had rubbed against his ankle, leaving an infected wound that killed him as a result of a weakened immune system. Robert left this world on July 15, 1940, at the age of 22. General Charles Miller Shelley seen here working at the Treasury Department between the 1880s and 1890s. He was appointed by President Grover Cleveland after losing his congressional seat in 1885. Charles was born in Sullivan County, Tennessee on December 20, 1833. He served four consecutive terms in Congress as a Democrat, two of which were contested by his opponents. He then became fourth auditor of the Treasury by appointment of President Cleveland. The last years of his life were spent in promoting the industrial interests of Birmingham, Alabama, where he left this world on January 20, 1907. He is buried in Talladega. Marilyn Monroe throws the opening pitch of the Out of This World baseball series while American television show host Ralph Edwards acts as MC in September 1952. Marilyn was born Norma Jean Mortensen on June 1, 1926 in Los Angeles, California. Later she took her mother's last name, Baker. Marilyn left this world on August 5, 1962 at the age of 36 due to a drug overdose. She has lived on in pop culture ever since. Here is a car accident in 1915, somewhere in Los Angeles, California. By 19 or 4, 1600 motor vehicles cruised the streets of Los Angeles. The maximum speed limit was 8 miles per hour in residential areas and 6 miles per hour in business districts. By 1915, Los Angeles County counted 55,217 motor vehicles. The county led the world in per capita ownership of automobiles and continues to do so today. Does the car look like a Model T Ford? Leave your comments below. These two African American Union soldiers, Valdi Guy on the left and George Guy, the right pose for a portrait between 1863 to 1870. Of the 180,000 African Americans who fought for the Union, 37,300 died. More than 20 African Americans were awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor. The nation's most prestigious military decoration. 14 of those men earned their medals at Kathleen's Farm in Henrico County, Virginia. Here a young boy sits on a park bench with an awing Utang at the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. between 1909 and 1932. The Smithsonian's National Zoo first started as Department of Living Animals at the Smithsonian. Fifteen North American species came to live on the National Mall. In 1889, President Grover Cleveland officially signed an act of Congress into law creating the National Zoological Park for the advancement of science and the instruction and recreation of the people. Two years later, the animals who had been living on the National Mall had a new home. The National Zoo officially opened in 1891. Bryce Barrett's Magnolia Gas Station on 204 North Madden Street in Shamrock, Texas. The Magnolia Petroleum Company was established in 1911. In 1925, the Standard Oil Company purchased the company and in 1959 became part of Mobile. This building was first opened on May 18, 1929. This station was used as the inspiration for Ramon's Body Shop in the Disney Pixar movie Cars. It has been restored to the time of the 1920s and can still be visited today. Here is William Howard Taft and his family, his wife Helen, his oldest son Robert and his youngest son Charles, in Washington, D.C. between 19 1905 and 1909. This was before he became the 27th President of the United States. His daughter Helen is not present here. A view from Forest Hill lies the town of Deadwood in the Dakota Territory in 1888. In 1875, a rich gold deposit was discovered in the northern Black Hills. A stampede of miners rushed to the area in search of wealth. Miners take their claims and set up camp in a gulch full of dead trees, hence the name, and the town of Deadwood is born. Here we have six-year-old Josie six years old Bertha, and ten years old Sophia, working as oyster suckers for Maguni Canning Company at Port Royal, South Carolina in February 1911. These young ladies begin their shift at four in the morning and work until early afternoon. L.P. Maguni and Company first began operation in 1870 and are still in operation today. 
Annie Edson Taylor poses with her cat and the barrel she rode over the falls. 1901. Due to her financial situation, Annie came up with the idea of going down the falls to garner fame and fortune to support her for the rest of her life. She had the barrel custom built for her stunt. The pickle barrel was around five feet tall and a little over three feet wide, weighing 160 pounds. It was made of white oak slats held together with iron ring. Inside a mattress padding was used for cushioning and a leather harness to keep Taylor from bouncing around too much. The 200-pound anvil was also placed in the bottom of the container as a ballast to keep it as upright as possible. Two days before taking the plunge herself, Annie sent her house cat over the falls in her barrel. The cat survived and Annie planned to take her journey on, on her 63rd birthday. Annie survived the stunt with only a cut on her forehead and a mild concussion. Unfortunately, she did not gain the fortune she had hoped. She left this world penniless on April 29, 1921, at the age 82. Here we have four beautiful women posing in swim suits on the beach in 1940s Atlantic City, New Jersey. Their names are unknown. The Shelburne Hotel in the background was a Jim Lee Award framed cottage that opened in 1869. In 1926, this modern, brick faced, steel frame, multi story structure was constructed along Michigan Avenue at the corner with the boardwalk. It was completely demolished in the 1980s. Here are the board of directors of the Coleman Manufacturing Company in Concord, North Carolina in 1899. The board of directors were S.C. Thompson, L. P. Berry, John C. Dancy, S. B. Pride, C. F. Messif, and Robert McCrae. The Coleman Manufacturing Company had the first cotton mill in the United States owned and operated by African Americans. The company was organized mostly by Warren Clay Coleman in 1897. In 1904, the company was unable to remain afloat financially and was affected by the loss of leadership when Coleman died. The Mauritania in late 1918 commissioned at this time as a troop carrier. This geometric design was designed by Norman Wilkinson in 1917 in an effort to confuse enemy ships. The design commonly referred to as Dazzle, this design applied by July 1918, was mostly several dark blues in grace with some black. The ship survived World War I and continued civilian service for the Cunyard Line. She was scrapped on July 4, 1935 after 29 years of service. A young 18-year-old Teddy Roosevelt at Harvard in 1877. While at Harvard, Roosevelt participated in rowing and boxing and he was once runner-up in an intramural boxing tournament. When he entered Harvard College on September 27, 1876, his father advised, Take care of your morals first your health next, and finally your studies. His father's sudden death on February 9, 1878, devastated Roosevelt, but he eventually recovered and doubled his activities. Teddy went on to become the 26th President of the United States. Large crowds of African Americans and white people separated by a long counter covered with slices of bread at a barbecue in Alabama. This event is hosted by FM Gaze each year. Homesteaders proudly showing off what they built out in western Nebraska in 1890. The Homestead Act of 1862 opened up the vast land for the West. The Free Soul Party of 1848 through 1852, and then the New Republican Party after 1854, demanded that the new lands opening up in the West be made available to independent farmers of up to 160 acres of land. The requirements were the homesteader be 21 years of age or head of household, unless those who served in the regular or volunteer forces of the U.S. Army or Navy for at least 14 days during the existence of an actual war domestic or foreign, made for the purpose of actual settlement and cultivation, and has never borne arms against the United States government or given aid and comfort to its enemies. Now keep in mind, this was during the Civil War. Thank you for joining us. I hope you enjoyed our travel back in time. Let us know in the comments which photo meant the most to you. Perhaps you may know who that unknown person was. Let us all remember those who were here before us. One day, we too shall be one of those people. Come back and join us again for another journey back in time.